This is part one of a two-part show, so check out part two when you're done. Hey guys, welcome to Arsenic Culture, where we go out of our way to find hard-to-get items. Oh, you're really, that's really enthusiastic. That's yeah. the most unenthusiastic intro I've probably ever heard. We were actually in a great mood until Jeff got here, and now it's just kind of... I like how you always say, we're going to start at one, and you're not even here. You're shopping, no, you're, you're at Canes, you're getting I was canes. actually raising I mean, canes. it's 149, it's close. Had, so it was an hour so after we were supposed to start. Yeah, we actually uh, it's not decided... I'm sorry. Started two, and then nobody told Jeff. So we're actually yeah. early. We're starting early today. <laughs> um, my name's Matt. Jason. Jeff. And <laughs> Why is that funny? Why is my name funny? Jeff. Because you, you mumble. Do you have a funny name. You mumble. You do have a funny name. Uh, we have a. Are we allowed to, Are we going to go non-denominational here? Is this a Thanksgiving episode or is, is that this a denomination? It's Turkey Day. I don't know. There's there's people that might we, get offended. We can call by it Turkey Day. Turkey Day. People, turkey get, day, turkey wait, day so day people get offended by the. Thanksgiving. Yeah, people get offended by everything. I'm pretty sure that's accurate, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure nobody gets offended. We get offended yeah. by you. I get offended by just you. Just being here. You invited me. You I mean, just walking ish. offense. <laughs> I'm walking offense. <laughs> well, we have a special uh, guest? fall oh. episode. Uh, Thanksgiving episode. We do have a special guest. It's in the middle of the table. Are we, yeah. eating, are we eating turkey? Right here, we brick? have a fruitcake. <laughs> this fruit... Yeah. I can't remember the last time I had a fruitcake. It's been a while for me too, and I can't remember the last time I ever wanted a fruitcake. I've never wanted a fruitcake. And I think the secret, <laughs> the secret about a fruitcake, right? It lasts forever, right? It can last uh, like twenty I, years, I thirty years. I don't for know. Some We're going to find out. It's the only cake that doesn't go bad. That I don't know. Because it's what soaked in alcohol or something. It is. So yeah. okay, I'm trying to find the email. So, I don't I'm glad you prepared for the show today. BBT pickup is this coming week. Okay, that and two of us here are going. Not Jeff. <laughs> uh, for people who don't know what that is, is that, that a is prostitute beer, thing? That is beer barrel time oh, from right. Side Project in right. St. Louis, Missouri. And me and Matt are heading up with another buddy, but, but Jeff's not going. Uh, we're going when you're not available, <laughs> whatever that is. Yeah, That's Just let time. us know when you're ready, and then you're not going to go on that day. <laughs> now, is that heavy? How much is that weigh? Here, feel it. So, oh my, no, it's not heavy at all. It's, it's, it's about a pound. This is about a pound. I thought it'd be like a five. Pound. Convert that mm-hmm. to uh, the metric okay. system, Jeff. If you can. So you can, five you can pounds math. of metrics is about thirty kilo. <laughs> thirty kilo. <laughs> so, in researching a Thanksgiving fall themed episode, try to find something that really captures the spirit of the season. And uh, this thing popped up on my on my feed, yeah, and good. it's a fucking yeah. fruit cake. Made by a guy named Robert Lambert. I don't know if it's a company. It's the guy's name, but Here in I don't know if, No, this guy is out of California. I don't know. Um, yeah. And uh, this, what I have here, is a dark fruit cake, mm-hmm. aged for two years. Um, oh, and uh, this thing was like a hundred bucks. Ooh. And these things, they, they make a three-year one, but, but it was we sold out. three-year-old, yeah. So we wanted to get three-year, yeah. So um, three but he says cake. what he has is what he has. And what so I was basically out. 60 when this was made. Yeah, or 70. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're about to, we're going to see what a rare two-year-old fruitcake tastes like. And supposedly, I, I did some research, and there's a bunch of websites that were reviewing this thing and saying it's, it's to die for, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> And of course, I'm you know I'm a little skeptical because it's a fucking fruitcake, so I don't yeah. know how good it can be. But um, there's like instructions on caring for it, um, on how to yeah, serve take it. Take it care for a walk. Yeah, it's well, it's it. it's funny because like on this little excerpt, he says caring for your fruitcake. He he goes like into detail about you know refrigerator if you can. If not, it's it's kind of okay when you serve it, slice it thin, so that way you can release the aroma. And at the end, he says these things are basically bomb proof, so you can't really fuck it up anyway. <laughs> And it's like, well, that's what everybody thinks of when they think of fruitcake. So well, that I think, sounds about I think right. when I think of fruitcake, though, I remember walking through the store when I was younger, and you see this like loaf that was very mm-hmm. dense, mm-hmm. and it would have just like gummy bears, you know, yeah. like gummy that's that consistency. But, it would, but they would sell like at a Macy's or something. Yeah, yeah. it would be anywhere. Yeah. It'd be like an end cap. So you, you know, know, you're right. It'd be like behind it. the perfume counter, like, like, a, like in the department, yeah. like in the department store. Yeah, but but it wasn't good. Them. I mean, I think no. if you've had those first those fruitcakes that I was introduced to, they were awful. But and I, I think they literally have ones. some with gummy bears in it. They do. That's yeah. what it looks like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I grew up with like a Win Dixie. I mean, you know, it wasn't yeah. it wasn't Macy's where I'm from, Jeff. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you had a Win Dixie. We had a Win Dixie. Damn, that's fancy. Did it you was. ever? Did you ever? Uh, do you remember Fruit Town? Uh, we had IGA, so kind okay. of the same thing. Yeah. I remember they had these green stamps that were like rewards. Really? It was awesome. Oh, you green get free stamp. stuff. I think it was. I think when it was I was a kid, we had green stamps, and there was a whole store for green stamps. Yeah, we had a catalog. 
was oh, awesome. We, so you would fill out the book. My mom would get those stamps when she went to the shop. Them on the, yep. Put them on the thing, and we'd go to the store, and it would say like, if you want this toy, it costs a hundred green yep. stamps or something. Right? So, so, so for vacuum. people that haven't seen those yeah. before, it's like a subway card. If you like, it's like they punch it and say. You know, your six subs free. These yeah. are like little stamps you get for buying groceries. Were they like actual like little stamp- cards? Yeah. Like the same thing you yeah. put like on a when, when you, would, if you when you look, look like um, that. Yeah, so like if there was a machine, and after you paid or whatever, mm-hmm. depending on how much money you spent, X amount of stamps would come out of the machine. Correct. Right? And they give you the stamps, and then we had these booklets. And my, I remember just licking the stamps and put them in the booklet and going to the store to get something for. It was a crazy thing. Okay. I, went, it was. I missed that. I never heard of that. Yeah. No idea how we got on that, but good. Yeah. So <laughs> we got, you started talking about green stamps. I did. I did. We got a two-year-old aged dark fruitcake, mm-hmm. um, and we got a couple of uh, boozy treats here. Uh, I'm gonna let you yeah. give us the rundown on these. That's We're sure. definitely gonna do that one. So the first one we got here, this one is barrel aged sticker shock from uh, Pulpit Rock oh, out of the core of Iowa. Yeah. So for people that don't know that brewery. So I think most people that are into beer would probably have heard of Topping Goliath. So these are two guys that used to brew. I think they used to brew at Topping Goliath. They were into something with it, but they left and uh, they went way far away, which was actually like across the street. So the original Topping Goliath location, this was literally across the street. They wanted to do more small batch stuff for them. They've been a brewery for about since about 2015. Um, and this is this is a pretty sought after beer. So on this one, I think they did this release in March of this year, maybe April. But COVID, you know, it kind of cut that down. So they actually offered proxies. We didn't land on Pulpit Rock. Pulpit Rock landed on us. That's, that's what actually, Malcolm. That's actually true. That's yeah. what Malcolm X said. And that's true. We didn't land there, so it came to us. <laughs> that's a famous Malcolm X thing. But from that, there was about twelve hundred balls this release. They came in uh, four. I think you get four each. Proxies were not originally available, so somebody couldn't get it for you. You had to go in person. But now, so they, they, they retail for about $20 a bottle. Um, if you look at secondary, like this one's over $300 right now. $300. And it's like a 12-ounce beer. We're going to drink $300 beer. Uh, we're going to drink more expensive than that in just a minute. Dang, son. Yeah, yeah. we're bougie. Ooh, you guys are bougie. I think <laughs> yeah. I'm bougie because I go to Whole Foods. You, you are bougie, you got yes. all there. So that's this one. It's got coconut, all kinds of other adjuncts in there, too. So actually, it's Imperial Stout, 15 months bourbon barrel aged with toasted coconut, roasted almonds, and cacao. And then what we got here? <clears throat> we have here, this is one I'm very excited about. So this is from Wellworks out of Greeley, Colorado. This is Starry Noche. So the, all their big barrel aged stouts are media noches. This one's Starry. They did this for their For those who don't know, that means midnight in Spanish. That's, I, I'll believe you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, on this one too, tons of big, show. big coconut. There's, let's see, on this one here, it's actually two years in barrels, conditioned on three pounds per gallon. That's a lot of toasted coconut flakes. Mm-hmm. Raw coconut chips and then finished on toasted hazelnuts. What would the beer industry do without coconut and chocolate? They would not do as well. I mean, basically every beer now has coconut and vanilla and vanilla. Yeah, but if you think of uh, what, so it's, if somebody said, "Hey, cakes. we're just making cakes now," but it's, they are, they are. Well, I mean, look at the fruit stuff. Cakes. Look at four fifty North. Look at the answer. I mean, it's either is juice it beer. Or, basically, uh, these days you're, you're either drinking juice or cake. Yeah. So, what is your opinion on that? I think this is seriously <laughs> something good, good that's question. good to talk about. Like, what do you think about the way beer has progressed from uh, like Czech lagers, like a, which is considered like you know the epitome right. of quality, to something like this, like the or, Sticker Shock, which is like 1979. This this company from California, this brewery, tiny little brewery in California, puts out a pale ale of Cascade and Bob's, and everyone loses their shit. Right now, we're drinking. Cake, I mean, basically, like, almost like uh, three hundred pounds of coconut mm-hmm. and yeah. chocolate and caco nibs and all caco those. nibs. Yeah, Co- Co- love them caco Co- Co- nibs. Co- <laughs> oh, I actually heard that about Co- James. Like, I don't know. Co- 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 so I'm in a Facebook Co- group Co- and is it cardamom? Co- 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 uh, I'm in a Facebook group for the Vale, which is a brewery out yep. of Richmond, Virginia. Um, they do a lot of these pastry stuff too. And That's I was kind of yeah, I was scrolling through. And uh, somebody posted a video of, of stout in a bottle, okay. and um, he the caption said, first time I've ever seen this. And you can see like a little headspace that's in between the, the cap and then where the liquid mm-hmm. is, and he turns it over, and none of the fluid's moving. 
it just fucking solidified. is full. Fo- wow. Like, yeah, it just it just solidified in there. That would be thick with how many that's seeds, ins- Jeff? You that's think? insane. That uh, four or five at least. At least four or five yeah. seeds. Okay. But the, the, okay. the fact that we're bottling stuff like this, mm-hmm. I think is well because people have sweet tooth. <laughs> Yeah, they want to drink. Uh, they don't want to drink beer anymore. They don't want to drink bitter. Remember the big deal? It was um, IBUs, IBUs yeah. or you're not worthy because it's too bitter. Or Sierra Nevada was too. Bi- like Great Cook also sells that story of trying to sell Stone in the early days, and they go from shop to shop and they go, "This beer is just too bitter." Now, but then we like bitter, but now we like super sweet. Yeah, we want everything. I, to I don't sweet. know that I agree with that part. I mean, we might like super sweet, but I, I think people just want more, 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 and more and more flavor. And the way to get that in there is adding these adjuncts and stuff. Now the things <clears> you see too, though. To the sweetness part, you see the throwback to you got to have an eight bit logo. You got to rip off you have somebody's trademark. Sure, you yeah. know what I mean? Like it's got to yeah. be Mike Tyson punch out, cartoony yeah. or video gamey or something like this. I mean, there's freaking Yoshi glasses that are three hundred fifty dollars a glass. Yeah, like that's crazy. You know, it, uh, I think this is a very American thing to go to extremes yeah. in order to um, impress people. Right. And right. it's I so think when you see on the polo. He's just doing the American thing. It's, he's not it doing the Swedish thing. It started in America, and I think thing. it. There's a lot of uh, breweries in Europe and and stuff mm. doing it now. But uh, yeah, that's. I mean, and, and everything that Americans because do. It's just like ex- how excess. how far can we push this? America is a country of excess. Yeah, so correct. We, we've exported excess around the, either either cheap food or excess. Exactly. So we and you're right. You know, it's yeah. it, you look at the IPA movement, and it's just like everything got hoppier and hoppier. And, and you know, double IPA, that category of beer never existed. It was just yeah. like IPA. And then there's triple IPA. And then there's just like, how many IBUs can we do, you know? And then just logically, it segues into pastry stouts. And it's like, let's put coconut. Let's put a fucking cake in there. Let's put candy in there. Let's put Sometimes, Snickers bar. Yeah, and and literally little brewing a beer with an entire, like, it's little, like it's which not, I think is stupid. It's because there's so, beer. there's so many preservatives and stuff in there. Like, I think it, it kind of like... I don't know. It's like a bastardization. I'm surprised the FDA hadn't got in on some of this. Like I'm shocked. I if you look at Angry Chairs, stuff like an answer. We'll also take into consideration um, a 450 North. Yeah. And their whole issue with the ABV. Sure. And granted, it was it was the other opposite extreme. They were reporting the ABV on their beers for anybody that doesn't know as much higher than it actually was. And somebody did an independent test, and some of these beers that they were saying was uh, like eight or nine percent. Were, what was it like one or two percent? So, so I, I think on their in their defense though, I don't necessarily know that they. I don't think they were trying to cheat somebody out of it. No, I no, think no. What they were doing was when they made that beer, it was an eight percent imperial. Yeah. Goes us whatever. So you know some yeah. kind of thing. But then what happened is then they add so much fruit and fruit fruit puree. Yeah. Hell, it your just, ABV was diving. It's like you're cutting it with water. Yeah. Which is, I mean, that's yeah. a pretty rookie mistake to make. But my yeah. point is that. But nobody nobody's been doing regu- it. nobody's regulating mm-hmm. this. Like the uh, who regulates breweries? It's it's the FDA. AT, the, AT, the alcohol tobacco. I don't know. Yeah. The, the FCC? The FCC FCC's don't watching care me. About me. The, the SEC? Is it the Southeastern I Conference? Think we're, SEC. we're actually playing right so. now. The SEC's playing. FCC? Uh, but it's weird this because... This show is also not regulated by the FCC. No, fuck the FCC. <laughs> What's the TTB? You're out of the tobacco and whatever. Like, yeah, they, that they, what they it is? labels yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. So, but it's crazy that like you can buy uh, an apple pie from... I mean, you can buy a potato salad from Crow, like Jeff likes to do. And Those for Jason. They have very strict regulations on what you have to put mm-hmm. on that container. You know, with like caloric intake and uh, sure. you know fat oh, and sugar and all that stuff like that. I don't want to see what this shit. Yeah, you get a beer can. They don't even have to put the right ABV <clears throat> on there. They're just guessing. They can do whatever they want. And it's crazy because don't. a lot of them don't put any ABV on there. They just yeah. leave it blank. And arguably, so. well, if it goes to distro, you have to put the ABV on. It. Is that what the rule is? Yeah. I thought it was certain states. But either I way, think, well, that might be true. I don't know, but if but I think if it goes to distro, you have to put the. If you're doing it just at the tap room and just have a canning machine. I don't think you have to put this. This is really good, by the way. What is this? It is really good. It's uh, weird. The, the, actually, my buddy Drew weird. gave me this from Street Side. It's a s'mores. Oh, it's it's yeah. a s'mores uh, demogorgon. But I'm getting like a lot of grain. <laughs> yeah, but I get like a weird liqueur kind of taste to it. Like a uh, clue kind of. Maybe. Yeah, you think yeah you know that? I could see that. This is a good one though. Thanks, Drew. You get any caco nibs? Caco. I got some caco. Co- co- I <laughs> Maybe we can get Jeff a shirt. I like caco, caco nibs. <laughs> More caco nibs, please. No. <laughs> All right, so back to the beer. So we're talking about these big pastry style mm-hmm. stuff like that. So th- people have cut corners. I mean, there's a good podcast on there, and, I- and I'll think of it in a minute, but uh, Corey King from Side Project and then Neil, I think his name is, from Wellworks, they're talking about that, how you get the mouthfeel, how you get the body. One thing we all like in, in big barrel A stouts is a thick body. I mean, just you want you body like on body. That. I like big bodies in my stouts, and I like cannot big, lie. Can you not I think. Lie, yeah. yeah, that's me. So anyway. <laughs> 
Um, so how they do that, I think some cut the corners. Like Corey and him would talk about like an angry chair would leave like sugar in there. It's kind of suspended. Like it's not – like lactose, that's like yeah, it's, non-fermentable. It's, it's not fermented out. So, I mean, yeah. that's not shelf-stable. Back to what we were talking a while ago. You got 450 North beers, tons of fruit, and, and they taste good, some of them. I mean, are they beer? Eh. But well, the lactose they're is... They're going to blow up. The they're lactose up. is fine because it's not fermentable, so that won't explode. But, like, when you add the sure. fruit, there, there is fermentable sugar in there, and that's what... That's not shelf-stable. But I, I, one thing I'll Especially say with Angry yeah. Cherry beers, and I, I'm not picking on them. I, I like some of their stuff, but that kind of beer... You can't age that. Like if you age those beers like that, I mean, like the. the I mean, you're just asking for trouble. You mean like gets, the adjunct stouts with yeah. like that basically. Well, that, that cake. exactly. So if you, oh, they, well, not just fade. They get this like metallic, mm-hmm. like a. They get yeah. cardboardy or just metallic. No, like a, it's almost like tin. It's almost mm-hmm. like an off flavor. Yeah. Uh, you would think it's going sour, but I don't. I've not held on to one that long. I mean, even so. coffee beers, if you age them, they you fade. get that green they pepper sometimes. Vanilla, they fade. Yeah. yeah, they fade out. Well, of course. So if you're aging any stout more than a month, I would fridge keep it or cellar temp. If they're not full of adjuncts, but if you got vanilla or coffee or, or all this ca- cacao. Cacao, man. Yes. Yeah. Cacao. <laughs> Coconut. <laughs> What's next? I mean. What is next? We're going to throw a whole I, cake. I don't know. So that's, I think that's the follow-up question. Mm-hmm. Do we do we approach a threshold? Fudge. How come they just don't take fudge? Oh, they have. I'm sure they, they have. Pour it into there might be fudge in the case. Case. Yeah, I guarantee somebody has. Mm-hmm. No, I think I think there is a logical threshold that once we approach it, we can't go past it, mm-hmm. and I think we move on. And I think it's what happened with hops. You know, IPAs are still super popular, but oh, people absolutely. weren't obsessed with like creating the hoppiest IPA uh, after they've already created them as hoppy as they can go. And people still love IPAs, but nobody talks about IPAs anymore. Everybody well, talks, talks about haze. pastry stuff. Talk about haze. Well, I think that there's a Well, big, yeah, but it's not yeah. like... Do you remember the days not where... West Coast. Yeah, we're like... Yeah, you would trade for like Pliny the Elder, and it's just like mind-boggling if you can get mm-hmm. this beer. And now it's just like... That's a shell. It's when a People shelter. don't care about... Like the new um, Sierra Nevada, I thought it was really good, the... Um, the dank IPA. Yeah, I like that when you gave me one. Yeah, I think it's really, it's really, it's a great IPA, extremely drinkable, but that's not going to make anybody super excited. No. And it's no. also the price point is really reasonable. So if you need something that's at least twenty dollars a four pack, total haze, and tastes like tropical fruit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like IPAs a lot, and I like the hazy ones honestly because it's usually hops and water. Like it's less of a no malt. Yeah, it's not as, I don't like malt. I don't like malt in IPAs. I'll drink classic double IPAs. I mean, I like Bell's Too Hard. It's a little malty. I'm good with those beers, but preferably... But you're not going back to 60 Minute. Exactly. I'm not, I'm not going back there. Or 90, whatever. But <clears throat> I think from here, I don't know if they can go any further in, in the IPA direction. No. You look at Monkish, Trillium, and Treehouse... I mean, I don't know how much better you get. There's some breweries that make a little bit better, but we're talking fractions yeah. of a little bit, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I think people really focused on IPA production and yeah. brought attention to IPAs until really we're at a, a threshold to where you really can't make them any better. There's lots of great options out there. Once that happened, I think people started getting curious about milkshake sours, mm-hmm. putting lactose in your sour beers, uh, these pastry stouts, adding all kinds uh, of additives. Take a Berliner Weiss and just dump a bunch of crap in it. Exactly. Yep. This, is, this is the next logical American progression of extremity. You, we were going to the hoppiness, now we're going to like this adjunct revolution. Um, but that's that's the question is we're we're gonna hit a, a limit here too. So I mean, what happens? I think we're like, where right do we right go? Now. Where do Americans go from there? I think we're already there. I think what we're we're seeing popping up in some of the beer groups and people say, oh, you've reached. You got like a cycle with a beer nerd. You know, they're saying, oh, you're here. What's well, Pilsners right now? I mean, I feel like Pilsners are kind of. Good kind of hot. Good Pilsners. Oh, yeah. Good Pilsners. Quality you know, you're Pilsners. talking Beerstadt Lager House. Yeah. You're talking Suarez. Suarez. I mean, yeah. you know, now, I here's, have, I, here's the thing about. about a really good pill. Those is high that pills too. I think anybody, any person that considers themselves a beer aficionado <laughs> goes through this progression of stages of beer nerdery. Mm-hmm. And I think for anybody that has gone through those stages, it's, you know, you get really excited, then you get really knowledgeable, then you kind of become an asshole about it. But then you kind of like, after you've had everything, then you kind of get to a point to where you you regress mm-hmm. and you go back to the beginning yeah this is a typical well you can you can appreciate out there it's like a, you can uh, appreciate it better viral thing you know you start here and you go all the way up to the get your sure. adjunct and sour blah blah yeah and when you're done 
You just dis- discover that there's something called a pilsner. And I think when we talk about pilsners, I think what we're seeing is a lot of people that were getting into beer are now going back into that regressive state, and they're starting to appreciate pilsners. I don't think that's going to be the next big thing. I no, think but I think it's really going to put their another... attention. They're putting their attention there. These breweries are. Yeah. You see a lot of local breweries trying for a pilsner. I right think now. the next big thing right now is going to be a survive because we're going to see COVID. COVID. The next big I thing you were talking about country boy can beer. I was like, yeah, mm-hmm. also country boy can survive, but surviving COVID they did can survive. Uh, how kids. many? What did we reach? Like <clears throat> three, four? How many? Four thousand breweries right now? I, I don't I, know. Whatever, six thousand breweries. It's, yeah, like it's even more than that. It's so like we're going to see a couple thousand fade in the next six mm-hmm. months. They just can't with their tap rooms closed. No distro. They can't move enough off premise. They just can't do it. They can't survive. Uh, yeah, you're probably up, unfortunately. Yeah. And then we'll see. And then we'll wait a year. We'll see new breweries come back on. But as far as styles, I don't know. But as far as just keeping the lights on, that's yeah. going to be the biggest. Problem. I don't think beers is going anywhere. No, no, breweries. No, whatever just, we see after COVID, all, all the businesses, closed. all the businesses that close after COVID, it's going to be terrible for the people who own those businesses, obviously, sure. and work there. But within a year to year and a half, they'll be replaced once things settle back down again. But just new businesses, new yeah. breweries. Yeah, we're, I was talking to somebody the day about you know the online. So with COVID, there's been some good things come of it too. Like, you know, people can actually work from home, do Zoom meetings. It's more efficient that way. But also with, with beer releases, um, now it used to be in person. You know, maybe it's an online release, but you had to go there and pick it up, mm-hmm. like Decorah, Iowa. Yeah. But with COVID, they've done online beer releases and done proxies. So your online community has liked that a lot, but they're not going to keep doing that because they well, need you back in the tap room. Even though it's you a pain in the like, ass for the breweries themselves, and a lot of them don't want to do it, the best thing the government can do right now, I think, for a lot of the wineries and breweries, et cetera, is just open up online shipping. Mm-hmm. And those who want to do online shipping and feel like it's worth their effort because they've got these employees who, who can't stand and pour beers, but they could also put together packages. <clears throat> you know, and you in the shipping costs, etc. You pass on the consumer, but if they would just open up the, the barriers to online shipping for both wineries and, and breweries, and it, it could really create, help a lot of breweries stay in business. It would create more jobs too. You look at like Belgium in a box stuff. So they're a they're a company or a trade that actually that's all they do. They go pick it up, there's that package it for you and ship it. But there's also let's say I've got three or four people rather than let them go because they can't sure. they can't um, they can't pour beer anymore. Well, now they can pack boxes for me. Yep, that's so, true. Anything to keep them still employed. And I don't understand the rules about shipping beer and wine, and wine too. I think the wineries will probably have the same problem. We've got well, to open a- up the barriers. Because no kid, no 16-year-old kid is spending $100 on shipping to get and then waiting two weeks or a week, whatever. Well, the issue is you have to convince yeah. grandma who's 70 years old and is on the city council who approves this stuff? You well, got to convince her you're, that you're probably well, the state reps. The state reps are the ones who. I mean, that's the what I'm saying. These are people that are very traditional. But, but it stimulates their own economy. It stimulates their local economies. And like I said, there's no 15 year old kid who's saying, "Yeah, I'm gonna get a credit card. I'm gonna go online and spend." That's, it's not cheap to buy beer online. No. I'm gonna wait a week for it to show up and then I'm gonna get drunk. No. And also, what are you gonna get drunk on? Um, 12.7 percent. Nobody's listen. 15 year old kids aren't drinking this stuff. There's just no way. No, they're drinking cores like. Well, the problem here in Kentucky with shipping beers, right. you have dry counties, so you can't so go why. across those dry so counties. Even though the rules did change in Kentucky, so they did. We they don't did. see any change in in how things are. Nobody working. knows how to do it because those dry counties because and all the if taxes. If I'm a retail and, person in another state, I'm like, well, I don't know what your counties are, and I don't want to get hit with a fine if that's I ship to the wrong fucking county. Business opportunity right there. What's that? For some for in Kentucky, somebody that can Figured create an entity. Out. Yeah, I should turn these cameras on. If there were to be one brewery that you could have shipped to your front door, and you only pick one, what are you going with? It's a well, tough question. Is it one that's already engaged in this, or is never engaged in this? Just pick a brewery. It doesn't matter. Well, no, let's, let's say never engaged in it because there's not many that do. I mean, obviously, you've got countryside though, like in the United States. Yeah, you're not, not here national. Are we going to pick Treehouse? Are we going to pick other half? I don't know. I'm asking you. I'll, I'll tell you what I'll pick in a minute. Um, I guess Treehouse, maybe. Okay. That would not have been my choice for you. I would not have thought well, that. What did you think? I was that thinking? is kind of that, a strange choice for you. Yeah, that, that wouldn't have been Why? my choice. I don't know. I figured Place. you'd pick well, here's, like here's my thing on Treehouse. And, 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 and I like them. though. <laughs> and I like Treehouse yeah, a lot, weird. but I don't know. Yeah. I saw other half ship in Illinois recently, so maybe they've sent some stuff. Okay, so what, what do you think? What would you pick? Um, Without thinking about it, first thing I'd go with is Trillium. Or Trillium. Yeah, it was another. They, they have, they're much better, Actually, like, rounded portfolio. I might like, change. That's, that's something I'd look for. I too. might change the Trillium. Yeah. 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 No, you can't change it. No, you're, 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 you're locked You're stuck locked in. in. <laughs> you know, and not. And I'm not giving you any of my Trillium either. <laughs> not going that round. <laughs> trade. Nope. <laughs> so I think if I'm picking one brewery, I mean, there might be more I think about, but I'd love to have. 
love to have burial yeah. shipped to the house. I mean, their stouts are great. And they ship their, their, their IPAs. Are, they do. They do ship to a few states. And a few of these breweries have done that. They've picked a few states and said, we'll sh- maybe for legal yep. reasons or whatever, we'll ship to these states. Burial is in pick Kentucky. But yep. I think if you live well, in South Carolina. Those liquor laws, yeah. If you live in South Carolina, Tennessee, and maybe a couple of those states, I think you can get barrel shipped to them. Yeah, so usually Tennessee and Ohio all around us can get shipped, yeah. Who wants some fruitcake? Me. Me. Who, who doesn't want fruitcake? <laughs> All right. That's the real question. So, this thing is Let's wrapped in a kind of snacks. tissue paper. Oops, sorry, I was not supposed to This is wrapped so. in green tissue paper. Oh, look at this. And then bubble wrap. Look and at then this. Then there's wax paper underneath here. Wow. Because you need it's bubble wrap on your fruitcake because it might. Well, it was shit. It might break. <laughs> I mean, it's sorry, probably hard. Yeah. This, this thing ain't breaking. This is very interesting. Look, look, how, this. look how fucking fancy That looks like banana bread. It looks a little bit like a banana bread. Yeah, I mean, that's what that's what fruitcake would look like, Jeff. Well, they, no, actually, I've seen fruitcakes that have more of like a reddish hue to it. And well, pale like there's that. there's like a cheesecloth on the outside here, so. Mm. This will probably, this might kill us, but, you know. Oh, that's right. It does, that's a cloth. That's not the it might be worth it. Yeah, well. I've only, I regret that I have only one life to get for my fruitcake. <laughs> That's the best statement you've ever made, I believe. Yeah. No. Good job. I think so. There's some early episodes. I'm really fine. Nah, you've not had Are you excited about this, Jeff? Yeah. Uh, Sam. You're scared I'm, to eat I'm a fruitcake. I'm not scared to eat this fruitcake. But you would eat Maggie I'm not scared. cheese. I'm not scared to eat this fruitcake. I'm scared. I see yeah. it. Uh, I cannot wait. Little, he, he was a little quick. He was, he was shaking my I'm, I'm this close to getting us the maggot cheese, so hold on a second. Are you really? Yeah, we're going to have there's no way I'm eating maggot cheese. There's no way. There's this not enough thing. alcohol in your cellar to make me uh, eat. You say that cheese. now, but wait this, thing, this looks like it was made in the 1700s. <laughs> it might have been. Maybe he meant it's 200 years old. I, I could see that. I need. It's got that old timey look. What is that it's star steel. on it? Is it like a maple? It's a wax is it maple? I really don't know. Can I touch it? And there's also like a, a leaf there. What is the leaf? It's fancy. Is that a basil leaf? Or this is a, fancy what, in Whole Foods. What's that look bay like? Leaf? Bay leaf. A bay leaf. You see a bay leaf? I think so. Like, what's that? I can't see it. Right. Could be you, a leaf. You can't see that leaf. You can't see that leaf? Mm-hmm. How is it an angle? Again? No, well, there's an angle. Jeff's blind. There's an angle. Don't well, touch it. You're not supposed to touch the cake. It's a bay leaf. Dude, don't touch the cake. All right. I want so, to touch that star. Do, 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 do. Jesus Christ. Do, do. I really want to know what this is. Oh, oh it's probably edible. It's, um, Ginger? it's a fruit peel. Don't, don't eat that peel. all yourself. I want some of that. It's a <laughs> Pops they took in his mouth. Mmm, <laughs> yummy. Yeah, they took like an orange peel or something, and then Candy they cut it. it. Yeah, they, well, it. they cut it out into a star. That's fancy. Aww. That's an orange peel. Well, that's, for a hundred dollar fruitcake, they better that's, fancify that's the shit so out of this. Sweet. <laughs> and that's a bay leaf. Oh, no, this is like a leaf off a tree out of my. <laughs> Maybe it's a lemon. Let me take a lemon tree leaf. I don't know. It's all tied up. You're gonna have to cut that. I think. It's a good thing I got a knife. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty rustic. Yeah, drum roll. Can't. You okay? <laughs> I can't get through it. Good job, man. Jesus. One layer down. <sighs> Golf clap. Golf clap. Right. Getting all sweaty over there. God, this is the stickiest thing. That's what here you said. go. Here he goes, folks. Two years old. Okay, so you can see this cheese. Two year old cake is yummy. Super stained. Who does not like two year old cake? I'm guessing is so obviously. So is it rum? Aged. Is it like soaked in alcohol? Nothing. So they they he does put alcohol on it. Okay. He says he usually puts the alcohol on. Oh. Right after he serves it, it looks, so. it's pretty. It looks like a banana bread. Okay. You want to smell it or something? Mm-hmm. I don't know. So we used to every every year for Christmas, Dad would make a Southern comfort cake. You know, as me being say a fifteen year old boy trying yeah. to eat a piece of this, like because you're looking to get, take your breath because you want to get drunk. Uh, maybe. All right, All right, here we go. Cut him open. He says, "Cut it really thin, okay. so the flavors have nowhere to hide." I don't know what that means. Like a fucking Robert Frost. I don't have any. I don't think there's anywhere for him to hide right here. We probably Jesus. see him. Looks like there's a lot of fruit in it. That's it. that's a lot of fruit. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a dark one. Too. Is there different colors? Different like. There's a dark, and then there's a white. And that that's that's the fruit that's in it, right? Was it like more yeah. citrusy in the lighter one? I think. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> you don't need to cut the whole thing though. I'm just. That's so. That's like, I mean, like each so. piece is like eleven dollars, Jeff. Probably. Yeah. So we need eleven dollars before you can try it. Go ahead and like cut you off like a little sliver there, or just eat the whole thing. Oh, we don't want to eat the whole thing. You can if you want to. I'm gonna cut mine in half. I know. I'm I'm a little skittish going into this. 
That's sixty dollars there, Jeff. That butt. All right. So, hmm. well, let's see. We got a lot of dried fruit. Here's a wet towel. It's really sticky. Oh wow. Some. I mean, I mean it's fruit cake. That's the best fruit cake I've ever had. Oh okay. I'm actually impressed at how complex this is. I'm getting some alcohol taste. Yeah, just like, just like a it's almost like a liqueur. Yeah. Maybe you took like Grand Marier and just poured it on there. Get a little grandma. Grandma's closet when you're hiding from your parents' anger <laughs> on a Thanksgiving night. Hiding from your so parents' you're anger. You're saying <laughs> Thanksgiving at grandma's house. And you hide in your grandma's closet and you smell those mothballs and the old dickies and dresses she hasn't worn in 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting like, I'm getting like hints of like, almost like cocoa nibs. So I'm getting like a little bit of chocolate in there, but I don't think there's any chocolate in this. I'm getting it's definitely that. nuts. There's like a walnut I got, but it's really good. I'm getting that fruitcake weird I taste. It's red. The fruitcake. I think it's like cranberry. It's, it's really good. Cranberry. Red one is? Mm. I think so. Is there chocolate in that? Do you all get like some sort of like super dark fruit, like a like a Bourbon mm -hmm. County style mm -hmm. dark fruit kind of thing? You know? Yeah. Well, no, oh, I got I got nuts in my mouth with that one. That's what Jeff does too. What he said. I mean, it tastes like a fruit cake. I mean, that's pretty damn good. Is it hundred dollar good? I'm not sure, but that's pretty damn good. I don't know I if mean, I paid hundred dollars for a fruit cake. I'm glad I did. You are. I don't know if I buy it again. I don't know, dude. Here's the thing. In the right circumstances, but I'm going to buy that again. The question, are you glad, is always a difficult one for me. Because we had the same, when we talked about the um, the stuff I bought, the smoked fish. If you're curious about something, mm -hmm. yeah. and you get it, I, you can still be glad. And then because you say, my curiosity has been satisfied. Mm -hmm. like, I was really interested in what a $100 fruit cake would taste sure. like. Okay. I agree with that. So here's my take. This is, as far as fruit cake standards go I, I, I there's no question it's this is fantastic mm -hmm. yeah this is not mm -hmm. what people expect when they eat fruitcake but the thing is the kind of flavors i'm getting here there is a lot of complexity there but i'm getting a lot of underlying um uh like dessert kind of umami and mm -hmm. I, i'm getting some like some like really rich like kind of like chocolate like dark chocolate out of it and i don't think there's any chocolate in it but the thing is if you wanted something like chocolate then just get chocolate cake <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? I can see going to a nice restaurant though, and having a slice of this, and you see you see it on the dessert menu and be like, oh, I don't know about that. That's but then true, if yeah. you actually ordered it, you'd be like, Okay, holy yeah. crap! Like yeah. having an after dinner drink, like yeah. I bet I bet a nice glass of like brandy or cognac, yeah. e even nice bourbon, like a BTAC something, you know? Yeah, like this would be really really good with that. Maybe with coffee. I yeah. don't think I don't know that coffee for no. me would extend. I, I, I want something alcohol in it. I think for this one, I want like a really aged bourbon. Oh, or, something. or um, I was gonna say a port. Yeah, yeah, port absolutely. Would be really it'd be it'd be really good, really good with this. Mm -hmm. Maybe a port Madeira, yeah. uh, Armagnac. I remember we had a, I had a ball of that cognac Armagnac. Mm -hmm. That'd be really good with this right here. I mean, it's hard to say something that small is worth a hundred dollars, but I mean I. Th I think it is. I think it kind of is. That's that's the best fruit cake you're ever going to have. Well, the good thing about it is it's so dense. Um, it's I mean, not like you're going to just yeah. go through that by yourself. No. And the thing is, you can continue to age this. I can wrap this back up, throw it in the fridge, and eat it next year. There you go. Oh, it right. sounds disgusting, but it'll is be fun. Is there some limit in time to eating a fruit cake? Like, I don't fucking know. Do well, like did it come up a date? Did it say I can don't ask eat, Robert Lambert. Don't eat after, like on the receipt, does it say don't eat after 2029 or something like that? It said best before you die. I think that's what best it said. Best before you die? Yeah. yeah. The fact that the carrying instructions had like a footnote that said these are pretty much bomb proof, <laughs> I think that you could probably go a little while. And There's a that. lot of alcohol in this though. Like it's it's definitely being soaked in brandy or something. It's yeah. it's there. It's the really good. The more I eat it, the more I think this is amazing. Like I, I want to kind of slow down because it's so, so heavy. I'm afraid I'm going to like. Jeff, uh, what do you think of the fruitcake though? I think it tastes like fruitcake. I don't think it tastes like fruitcake. Really. No, I Let's do a side by side with like a uh, Birdine's Macy's fruit cake. We should have, honestly. Yeah, we actually should have. Should have right, done that. Uh, I think it's it's definitely soft, maybe from the alcohol. <laughs> they just like dip it in like yeah, whiskey. And it's got it's got those dried fruit flavors to it. Um, it's not my jam. But fruitcake was never my jam to begin with. Yeah, but you're, you you were talking when you walked out a minute ago. So Jeff likes pies better than cakes. Yeah. So that's okay. You know. 
Yeah. I think it's really good. I think it's great. I'm actually I'm happy with his decision. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I'm teetering on the edge of whether it's worth a hundred dollars or not. So, but the fact that I can hold on to it, I know it's yeah. not going to go bad. I think that kind of you can keep it for your uh, wedding anniversary next year. <laughs> keep, yeah. <laughs> but you, how many years you be married next year? Three. Three. I, I don't Two. know. One. That's the right answer. Are you not married? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Can't we got, well, we got, don't watch this. We don't got watch a common law marriage, so. Common, is it common law? Yeah. yeah. How many years you common law married? It's be great for your anniversary. Did you Lying not in bed, it? getting about to be romantic, honey? Hold on one second, and take out the fruit cake. <laughs> What do you think? Is you this think? why you're divorced? No, what, do you think about, what do you think about that idea? That is not, why, yeah. That's, that's not exactly. working. Yeah, I was, that's I was not wondering what happened in your relationship. Now I really know. Mm. It was the fruitcake. <laughs> there was the fruitcake. The fruit it was always the fruitcake. Yeah. Um, so the other thing, compare this to what we've had on the show. So the cookies. So the cookies ended up being about what? Was it $10 a cookie, roughly? Like or $5 that. a cookie? I think it was 15 No. According to him, it, it was like $50 a I cookie. I think it was $10 a cookie. So is, is this worth... 10 cookies. I mean, it, honestly, it's kind of about the same. Mm-hmm. It's smaller, but I think it packs just as much punch. I mean, yeah. you, could, from you a, can... From a volume perspective, obviously not. From a... Quality. Quality. Yeah. Um, see, and a lot of what you're paying for here is what you pay for in a lot of um, sure. seller kind of items. Mm-hmm. In, not antique, but like vintage <clears throat> items, mm-hmm. you know? You're kind of... You're paying for um, the intrinsic value, you know? It's like the... Cherries handpicked from my mom's cherry tree from <laughs> Wait, what? twenty years ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that almost went the wrong way. It went, it went bad. That thing of yeah. like picking something from your mom. Yeah. Got very yeah, dangerous. I'm, I'm out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like, where are you going with this? See, I, yeah. I equate this to like, and I'll Sequence. go back to beer again. Though we're talking a lot about beer this episode, but um, you know, would we do that? The old money. This is old money. This, this is, is this is barley fruit wine is life, right? Fruit this cake is, barley is old wine. money. That's an old money tick. The fruit yeah. cake, and then That's you a go grandma tick, and right then there. you go with the cookies. It's the new age. Let's throw See, whatever we can. When I think of fruit there, cake, you know? I think of like grandma and her moth, the mothballs in her closet. You told us this three times now. Good job. And can well, we have something? To cut I get this edited out all the time, so I need yeah. to make sure that my thing gets in there. I'll cut that. But if you get, if I were to pair this with a beer, I think a really nice barley wine, like I deal with the devil thing. That'd be yeah. that'd be awesome with this right here for or like me. A, like a maybe like a sticker shock. Maybe like a barrel a sticker shock. Yeah, let's try it. Let's do it. I just don't think of fruitcake as kind of a hip artisan craft thing. So it's like you. So are you hip and artisan? <laughs> I am. Very no. hip. Are you? I shop at Whole Foods and I'm from Brooklyn originally, mm. so I'm hip. I give up. Doesn't work. Here, let me see. Give me that bottle. My I'm gonna use Kentucky for Kentucky. Well, the problem is you gotta get to. Top off too. Like this is a very sharp op- opener on your hands. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt is trying to get the wax off a three hundred dollar <laughs> bottle of beer with a weird knife that has this kind of pokey thing at the end. I'm not sure. Pokey that's, thing at the it's end. It's like a What's charcuterie that? knife. What's like that with thing the, at the end? The cured meats. Looks like a lobster claw. Maybe to get the lobster claw at the end yeah. of your knife. Like a fine charcuterie board, like bologna, bologna. Pick, pickle pig's feet. What do you put on your charcuterie board? Bologna, bologna, uh, craft cheese, like the craft slices. Cheese. Yeah, but you have to, the ones that are individually sliced. Uh, I'd, God, I'd, I'd, I'd probably take them by the wrapping for you. Make it before nice. you put it down. You take the you yeah, take the plastic off. I think so. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, if I really wanted to be like high, like have some dipping sauce. Yours? Maybe, yours? maybe that some. Bologna is dangerous. That'll it's very. Up. Maybe some like Chick Fil A sauce to dip it in. Some Ritz crackers. Oh, of course. But but maybe the premium. Probably the potato yeah. Salad. Kroger potato salad. That'd be good. That'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Gonna do a little rinse here. So it's it's off. We have it open. Um, we've tore the hell out of the. <laughs>